Hey guys, Breeze here, and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS. Welcome back to our awesome series regarding the introduction to PLAB. Everything you need to know as a beginner. And in this lesson, what we're going to talk about is all the expenses you can expect on your PLAB journey from day one when you start thinking about PLAB to the day that you actually start working in the NHS. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Naturally, the range of costs for everyone will be different because everyone has a different way of approaching the plaid pathway. And of course, everyone comes from different backgrounds. To keep things simple and to give you all an idea about how much cost you require every step of the way, we're going to think about everything in three categories. The first one being from IELTS until PLAB 2, and from PLAB 2 until GMC registration, and then once you get your work visa and you settle in, you, and you're really pretty much working in the NHS. So guys, what I want you to take away from this is, whatever anyone tells you, like somebody will be like, hey man, how much does it cost to do the whole PLAB journey? And let's say they tell you some unreasonable number, or whatever they tell you. You have to remember, that doesn't mean you need to have all that money up front right then and there. The entire PLAB journey is a journey. There are steps along the way. Every cost comes every step. It's not like at the very beginning someone's going to be like, listen, I'm going to need all that money that you will have for the entire journey right now. When we have mentioned these categories, you can take breaks anywhere along this way if you think you need to put together some more funds or if you just need a break about, you know, this is a lot of work, I'm doing a lot of stuff. And don't think that you need to have all the money right then and there. A lot of people opt for the UK pathway thinking, well, it's not as expensive as going to certain countries or different countries to study abroad or to work abroad. And yeah, that's true, but there is still a good chunk of money that you have to put towards that. And if you're smart about how you're spending that money and when you're spending that money, you'll realize it's actually not that bad. So if we again start out and think about from IELTS until your PLAB 2, what you'd have to think about. First, of course, you need to know if you have a password. If you have a password already, that cost is absorbed. You don't have to worry about it. We're not going to stick a numerical figure to the cost of a password because every country has a different passport fee. But what you do need to have, of course, is your English proficiency exam, either IELTS or OET. IELTS academic will cost you about £160, and OET will cost you about £332. So I'm giving variations because these costs are not always very, you know, fixed, especially if you're taking it abroad. There are, of course, um, costs associated with conversion fees and what have you. But in general, with these two exams, that is the fee you can expect. Then, of course, you've got the fee for your PLAB 1 exam, which will cost you £239 as of the making of this video, and your PLAB 2 exam, which will cost you £875. Another thing you have to take into consideration is now you require EPIC verification before you can get GMC registration. We really recommend that you get your EPIC verification as soon as possible because it can be a lengthy process that's heavily dependent on how quickly your college will respond to the emails sent out by EPIC or the ECFMG team. So the quicker you get it done, the easier it is. And for the most part, everyone has said that we know of that if you're at home when you're doing it, it happens much faster than if you're abroad. So you don't want to be in the situation when you finish PLAB 2 and you are waiting for GMC registration in the United Kingdom just because your EPIC verification isn't done. So in general, you can expect about £250 to go into your EPIC verification. We're not breaking up the fees and you know where that all goes into in this video, but we have an article that we've linked that talks about EPIC verification and steps, you know, and the cost every step of the way. So we'd suggest you look at that. So there you go, there's the first chunk out of the way. Okay, so what, what did I talk about there? I talked about cost for IELTS or OET, PLAB 1, PLAB 2, and your EPIC verification. And there you have it, done. Now let's think about from PLAB 2 until your GMC registration. How much money can you expect to go that way, and what have you be spending it on? Well, you know already from watching our course that for PLAB 2 you have to come to the United Kingdom. And how will you get to the United Kingdom? The first thing is, do you have the right to enter the United Kingdom? Do you need a visa? 
Some countries who will be coming, guys, you know that you don't need a visa, so there's no visa fee. But if you know you need a visa, your country will have different visa fees depending on where you're coming from. So again, we're just going to kind of give a general range for that. But that is something that you have to think about. You will need a visa and of course you'll need a way to get to the United Kingdom. Of course, again, here we are, we might think there are different ways. You won't all have to get on a plane. You might be able, if you're close enough, to get to the United Kingdom by a bus or by a train. But whatever it is, that is a cost you will have to think of. Um, we do recommend, of course, getting a round trip because you will need a round trip on a standard visitor visa. They will not let you come in on a single. So your cost may be a little bit more. But, of course, depending on the type of plane ticket you get um, and, you know, if you're an economy, business, or first class, how much a whole lot will cost you, it'll be at a range. So that's the second thing that you have to think about. So what have we talked about so far? We've got your, your visa out of the way. We've got your plane ticket out of the way. Now you're thinking, well, okay, yeah, I booked a PLAB 2 exam. Do I need to do anything else? Like, where will I be staying? Of course, you can't just think, well, I'll get to the UK and we'll figure it out when we get there. Ideally, you should have booked an accommodation ahead of time. And you should be knowing, of course, how much that accommodation will cover you for the duration of time that you will spend in the United Kingdom. Now, with a visitor visa to the UK, yes, you can stay for six months, but that doesn't mean you have to stay for six months. Some people will only stay for the duration of time that they feel they need to prepare for the PLAB 2 exam, take the exam, and they'll come home. It's up to you. So as long as you stay in the UK, of course your cost of living there and the expenses, as, uh, the expenses associated with that will increase. All right. So if we just generally say that it may cost you, let's say, 600 pounds a month on rent, accommodations wise, like food, utilities, whatever else, Take that as a general range. But of course, guys, if you find yourself in a really good situation where you can do a room share or you're sharing a bigger area with a lot of people, that cost can go down. But if you think, no, I want to place my own, roughly, if you're staying in some of the bigger cities, you can expect to pay between 400 to 600 pounds per month on all of those things. Okay, and again, you don't have to stay for the full six months. It's up to you however long you want to stay that you would be staying in the United Kingdom. Of course, there is the other thing about whether or not you would want to pay for an academy. If you take a course, a Lab 2 course, um, that cost can also vary between 400 to 600 pounds, but that's totally on you. Do not feel that you must take an academy course. Finally, once you pass Lab 2, what do you get? You get GMC registration. So for your GMC registration, you may have to think about one of two things. First of all, are you a relatively new graduate or are you an older graduate? Now, there is no discrimination in the sense of the type of GMC registration you get, depending on if you're an older or newer graduate. But what GMC is concerned about is how much you would have to pay. You'll be paying £156 if you've graduated in the last five years. If it's been more than five years, however, you're going to be looking at £406. They odd numbers. They're not very, like, round or anything like that. But those are the fees. So where have we gotten to at this point? We've talked about the cost of you getting to the UK, about a visa if you would need a visa, about the cost of your GMC registration, and of course your entire PLAB2 stay in the UK. Now let's move on to the last chunk of money that you're going to have to be putting forth, and that's from your work visa until you start working in the NHS. Now you've been in the United Kingdom, you've got your GMC registration, you've applied for jobs, and you might be wondering to yourself, well, how much is it going to cost to apply for jobs? Do any of y'all know? It'll cost you absolutely nothing. It'll cost you nothing at all. You're applying through NHS jobs and it's completely free for you to apply for as many jobs as you want to. What you will, however, have to pay for is your work visa. The skilled worker visa or what was known as the tier two visa. Effectively, it's your right to work in the United Kingdom that you will be sponsored for once you're selected for a job. So the cost for that is 232 pounds and you will apply for it online. Now there are associated costs within this that I will talk about, but if you want to know more about the Tier 2 visa or this skilled healthcare visa or the visa basically that would allow you to start working in the United Kingdom, check out our linked article where I talk about it at length. But the things that you will also have to remember when you are applying for this visa is, first of all, police clearance. This cost will of course vary from depending on what country you're coming from, but what they're looking for when you apply for this police clearance is 
you have to provide a police clearance for the last 10 years in any country where you've stayed in for 12 months or more. And these 12 months do not have to be consecutive. So what I mean by this is if you travel on vacation every year to Canada, okay? Let's say every year you spend three months in Canada. If you're spending three months in Canada every year of the last 10 years, you're going to need to provide a police clearance certificate for Canada because it meets that criteria that in the last 10 years, you've spent more than 12 months in that country. All right. So like I said, this cost can totally depend on you and the country that you're coming from. You may also need to provide more than one police clearance because like I said, again, if you've been in different countries within that time frame, you have to provide a police clearance. For me, I had to provide two police clearances. I had to provide one from the United States because I'm from the United States. And then I had to provide one for Bangladesh because that's where I went to medical college and I met that criteria over the last 10 years. But Ibrahim only had to provide one from Bangladesh, right? Now, another thing that you will have to think about cost-wise is a tuberculosis clearance certificate. You may or may not have to provide this. Again, we've linked an article where we talk about what other supporting documents you require for this visa and whether or not you would have to provide a TB clearance. Um, I did not have to provide a TB clearance because I did not meet the criteria for what they were looking for, but Ibrahim did. So this is something that will totally depend on where you're coming from or how long you've been staying in a particular country. So those are the two main associated costs for your work visa. Now. You may be thinking to yourself, you've not mentioned anything about this health surcharge or this immigration health surcharge that we've all heard about. The reason for that is it no longer exists. You no longer have to pay for one in our position. Individuals who are coming to work in the United Kingdom under the NHS scheme as healthcare providers, we no longer have to pay for an IHS fee or an immigration health surcharge, which is basically like an extra form of insurance or, or health coverage, if you want to call it that. It no longer exists, do not worry about it. You still are being provided free healthcare in the NHS without having to have this fee on top of your added extra visa fees. So after you square that away, of course, you have to think again about a plane ticket to come to the UK and that cost of course will vary. But of course now you can get a one-way ticket to the UK because you're ready to settle there. The last bit that we think is really important for you guys to remember is yeah, you're coming to the United Kingdom, but you can't expect to get paid the very first day you get there. So it's always good to at least keep a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds with you. That'll help you, of course, with what? Accommodation, settling in, food, moving around, at least that much. And of course, that'll depend on you and how many people are coming with you and where, which city you'll be moving into and what kind of accommodation you can expect. But it's a good thing to keep that much with you to make sure that you are comfortable until you get your first paycheck. There you have it. Your PLAB journey expenses. Now you might be like, Abriz, you've said a lot of stuff and you've thrown a bunch of numbers at us and I need to look at this over and over again. And that's fine, because guess what? We have an article about your PLAB expenses that we've linked and you can go through it at your leisure. And again, guys, I really, really want to reinforce this means that you can look at it in a very objective way and think, yes, I've come to this category, and this is the amount I will need in this category. Now I'm moving on to the next category, and that's how much money I will need in that area. You don't need all the money in one go, so don't stress out about that. Sometimes when people really, you know, fret, it's because they think, well, I need all of this money for the plab journey, but you don't need it all at once, and that's what we really want to get across to you. Like, there were a lot of parts of this, of course, that I said would be very dependent on you and your situation. So the one homework I'm giving you from the, <laughs> this lesson is you sit down at the end of this, go through that article, you know what the fixed costs are, that's going to be the same for everyone, and you take into account what are your costs, how much will it cost for you to do certain parts of this journey, and then you have it all in front of you, you know where your money needs to be spent, you know what you'll be spending it on and you can plan accordingly how and when you want to go about spending that money. So if anyone tells you that the PLAB journey is too expensive and it's too out of your reach, really, really take a step back and consider everything that we've said up until now and think about how you can approach and how you can figure out where you can get that money. No one's telling you to have all this money in one go and spend it. We already told you in the last lesson that the validity for these exams are two years. If you want to spread it over two years, by all means, do that. 
No one says even after you get GMC registration that you have to apply for a job and move to the UK tomorrow. If you need to take some time and put together some funds, go ahead and do it. It's not an end all be all. I need the money in front of me right now. All right. Do what you got to do, but do it at your own pace, because if you don't, you may put a lot of unnecessary stress on you. So hopefully this lesson has given you an idea of your costs. And in the next lesson, what we're going to talk about is planning and preparation for Plav 1. See you then. Thank you.